The Cole Pennington era begins in Huntington. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. All right. Uh, in addition to Cole Pennington making his first start, and that may be the end of Camp Bancher in Marshall, uh, JMU hosting game day. We'll get to that. How much could that be worth? And Troy, back to the Sun Belt Championship. And we got to give it up to a couple of coaches that, including Marshall's Charles Huff, that, you know, we're facing, I don't want to say tough odds, but uh, behind the eight balls, let's say. So let's start with uh, Marshall and uh, Cole Pennington getting the nod. Didn't seem to think that this was news coming into the game. Not only did Cole Pennington start, but Camp Bancher didn't dress. So it wasn't if I as if I missed that news during the week, which would okay not be all that unusual. Uh, concentrating on the job at, at 103.3 the goat, and you know doing the job here. But you would think that with the Thundercast guys and following Luke Creasy, someone would mention, you know, well, Cam Fancher not practicing this week. So Cam Fancher didn't even dress. Uh, and they are on a five-game losing streak. And it's gotten worse. It has. It wasn't really getting better. It was getting worse. So they lost with no Rasheen Ali to James Madison, 20 to nine. Uh, no offense to speak of whatsoever, but didn't play that poorly defensively because they had no offensive to speak of. And, you know, the defense was exhausted, but played pretty well in that ballgame. Then they lose co to Coastal Carolina, 34 to six to the backup quarterback, right? Grayson was out of that. Yeah, Jared Guest. Throws three touchdown passes against that vaunted, thundering herd defense. And then App State takes care of them, 31-9. to nine. So this is going in the wrong direction. And in a long day of football, and it started about 45 minutes before the LSU game, which I kind of have to watch. And uh, the NFL guys, NFL Network guys, who I thought did a pretty good job, are telling me, boy, when this defense is right, it's really good. Has the defense been right all year? I mean, all year long, they gave up 17 points to Albany. Uh, they fell behind East Carolina, only gave up 13, and then they did a good job against Virginia Tech, but haven't done a good job since. Uh, 35 to Old Dominion in a win, 48 to NC State, 41 to Georgia State, uh, and then we've just gone over the last three ball games. So they were behind the eight ball heading into this ball game with Georgia Southern, and they're coming off a huge win over Georgia State. Uh, and they're riding high, and they got a shot at the, you know, Sun Belt East title with JMU not eligible as of yet. We'll see if that changes this week. Uh, and uh, they decide, Charles Huff decides, they being Charles Huff decides, we're going with Cole Pennington. And he didn't exactly come out and light it up right he had some good numbers 15 to 20 for 201 yards and one interception Rasheen Ali carried uh, the load as one would expect in this kind of ball game 24 carries 165 yards three touchdowns that you do not have to be <laughs> a former running backs coach or the head coach of Marshall is a I got a youngster started making his first start. Uh, let's see if we can just hand the ball off to Rasheen Ali for a little bit. Um, and that's what they did. And, but Cole Pennington, again, 
pretty good. Also, I guess he recovered. I, I saw one he did, but I guess did he recover two fumbles on final possession of the game? That's worth his weight in gold right there. Uh, overall, though, this was a pretty good football game, right? It was on the side. <clears throat> Somebody may have had uh, Georgia Southern uh, to uh, cover in this ball game, so maybe we're watching it on the side. But Marshall jumps on top, seven nothing. Georgia Southern gets on the board at 7-3. Marshall goes up 10-3. Then it's 10-10. Then it's 17-10, 17-all. Georgia Southern goes up 20-17 to right before the half. Then another field goal, 23-17. Then Marshall comes back, makes it 24-23. Georgia Southern goes up 26-24. And that right there, by the way, is where Georgia Southern lost uh, the game, right? They're kicking a 38-yard field goal. So that means they're right around uh, the 20. Then they kick a 40-yard field goal just outside of uh, the 20, right about the 23. And then they were first in goal at the five or something like that, and they kick a 21-yard field goal. So instead of putting touchdowns on the board, they put field goals on the board. And so, again, the Marshall defense in this case actually stepped up and, although going up and down the field, stopped Georgia Southern when they had to. Uh, and so then Marshall uh, – Gets the go-ahead touchdown, making it 31-26. Uh, they get a late touchdown, making it 38-26, and Georgia Southern pours one on. So I guess if you had the over, <laughs> you probably 56 and a half easily won that ball game. But for all intents and purposes, it feels like the Cole Pennington era has begun in Huntington. It is time to move on. We're trying to hold back for as long as as possible, but it appears that's what's going to be the case. And I mean, how much pressure can the kid be under, right? He's got, his name is royalty there. He does have a great running back behind him, but you know, with all due respect to the Marshall wide receivers, Randy Moss isn't walking through that door. So, you know, as great as Chad Pennington was, uh, he had, I don't think I'm speaking on turn. He may have had the greatest college football wide receiver ever play at Marshall, right? Like this kid was going to Florida State and Notre Dame and he ends up at Marshall. <laughs> they couldn't cover him in the NFL. They weren't going to have very much success at Florida State and Notre Dame. Good luck covering him while he's playing for Marshall. So he had a lot of help and, you know, good for the kid who wants to follow in his father's footsteps. I think that's fantastic. Uh, I'm sure he understands the pressure. It's not like, you know, he woke up yesterday and his last name was Pennington. So he's been walking around with this this whole time. Probably doesn't affect him the way maybe we do think it does. But uh, at the same time, I don't think coddle is the right word, but you do want to bring him along slowly because once you go with him, you don't, you want him to succeed. You don't want to fail. At the same time, you realize, or maybe it's going to take a step back or two, right? Tom Brady didn't win all his football games. So, uh, you mean somewhere along the way you want, you know, two steps forward and you take one step back, two steps forward, one step back. What you don't want is one step forward and two steps back. Sorry, Bruce, borrowing the lyrics. So that's what you don't want. But big time job by Charles Huff going to Cole Pennington. Uh, they snap a five game losing streak. Tough loss for Clay Helton uh, and, uh, and Georgia Southern in what was a very entertaining college football game as uh, Marshall does win, what, 38-33. Uh, All right, when we come back, big news came down yesterday. JMU is hosting game day. We talked with App State coach Sean Clark last year. Exactly how much could that possibly be worth when ESPN's game day comes to your campus? We will do that when we come back. Time to tell you about, I believe, the Athletic Brewing Game changer of the week. Boom sauce. There we go. Okay. Now time for your game changer of the week brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Much like Jordan McLeod of JMU, Athletic Brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. What can you say about Jordan McLeod? 33 of 37. 457 yards in the air, four touchdowns. He was outstanding as JMU defeats UConn 44 uh, to six. 
Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. Full flavor and well-crafted, just like a full-strength beer. Their brews are great tasting and award-winning and beat out full-strength beers in global competitions. They brew over 50 styles of craft, non-alcoholic beer, including IPAs, Golden, Sours, and more. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use code LOCKEDON to get 15% off your first online order. That's code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at checkout for 15% off at Athletic Brewing Company. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, a fit for all times. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in and please subscribe. We're getting closer to the 800 uh, mark. It would be nice to be at that 1000 mark uh, when we do hit the new year. All right. So we got a couple of hundred, just over a couple hundred to go. And uh, hopefully you guys will still be here. Basketball just getting underway. JMU with another ridiculous victory beating uh, Kent State uh, in double overtime because, of course, um, South Alabama bounces back nicely with a blowout win on the road at Buffalo. And the Cajuns let one slip away. Yeesh. Up uh, up 16, not quite midway through the second half, and ended up losing by nine. Yeesh, not good. All right. And, and we're still got the, I think we just finished up the MAC, the MAC Sunbelt uh, Challenge. We'll have another one later on in, uh, well, next year, as it turns out, when uh, the RPIs are put together. Uh, all right. Let's talk about this uh, JMU action. Uh, JMU hosting game day. Okay, that's the first thing. Uh, when we had Sean Clark on Lockdown Sunbelt, had to be like maybe during camp, he talked about App State hosting game day, right? And so that was, what would they have? They, they, well, no, that was on game day, right? They come away with, they almost beat Carolina in that crazy, right, uh, ball game, um, scoring a bunch of points in the fourth quarter. Then they go and beat a &M, ironically enough, coincidence or neither. And, and then game day comes, and then they win on a Hail Mary. So pretty good start to that season last year. Pretty exciting, pretty thrilling uh, but Sean Clark said they did a study, and it was worth $550 million worth of exposure. They had a 25% increase in applications because of game day. Can't pay for that. You can't pay for that kind of advertising. And now, JMU is going to have, what's it going to be, a three-hour commercial? On why they should be eligible. And don't be surprised, as Shane Metlin alluded to, don't be surprised if the NCAA will, uh, changes their mind and grants the waiver, so to speak, for JMU. Uh, as Shane Metlin says, do the, does the NCAA really want this to be a three-hour bashathon on the NCAA? Because that's what it's going to be. Because Pete Thamel or whomever is going to say, we tried contacting the NCAA. And Charlie Baker is just going to tell us we stand by our original decision. That's what's going to happen. Maybe they don't care if they look bad, right? The NCAA always looks bad, so maybe they just don't care. But that's what it's going to be. Or it could be a celebration where JMU has still an outside shot, still behind Tulane, but an outside shot to be the New Year's Six Day Bowl. Also, regardless of the New Year's Six Day Bowl, right? JMU just really wants to play originally – as important as the bowl game is, they want to play in the Sunbelt Championship. That's what they really want. Okay. They want to be Sunbelt Champion. If they get the bowl game, great. But they want to play in the Sunbelt Championship game and then the bowl game. Okay. But without the bowl game eligibility, they can't play in the Sunbelt Championship. That's what they really want. They really want to put up a banner that says Sunbelt Champion. They didn't go it last. They couldn't do it last year. They're probably not going to be able to do it this year. I hope they do. I hope they can. All right. So that's really what they want. And so don't be surprised if the NCAA comes down with a decision 
in their favor this week. I don't know anything, don't have any sources, but it would seem to be the most prudent of all things to do. Of course, when was the last time the NCAA did anything prudent? So I would look for that maybe sometime this week. As far as the game, started out a little bit slow, but you know when everybody's kind of looking towards James Madison uh, and Kurt Signetti knows it very much so, uh, they're going to run up the score a little bit, and he doesn't really care. Um, they got off to a slow start, 3 nothing in the first, and 13-3 to uh, at halftime, and then 17 in the third, 14 in the fourth, and uh, they run away from UConn, who's just not a very good team. Uh, Jordan McLeod carried uh, the squad. UConn could not stop any kind of James Madison passing attack. Kalon Black only carried the ball you know, four times for 38 yards. They only rushed for 23 yards. I'm sorry, 23 times on uh, for 46 yards. Uh, they did give up 79 yards. That's a lot. <laughs> I mean, I think they give up less than 40, uh, but it really doesn't matter because this game was never close. Uh, and some of us did call that and got that one right. <laughs> that one we got right. So JMU improves to 10 and 0. They're 5 and 0. At home, they are hosting game day, and they get App State. It's, whew, that is going to be a fun ball game. So Sean Clark knows all about that, as we mentioned. Um, and it's going to roll, well, almost right into it. So um, it's actually an odd, so it's a 2 p.m. Eastern time game. So I don't know if they're going to change the game time, uh, game, time, game time or not. Probably not. But uh, game day will be there, and it is worth a ton of exposure that you just can't buy. They do finish up the season at Coastal Carolina. That's another coach that probably should be congratulated on what's going on. He's, he's down to his third-string quarterback, and, and at one point in time, the fourth-string quarterback, and they did not miss a beat. Really kind of you know, taking advantage of the Texas State, you know, one week we play defense and one week we don't type of situation. So, uh, I will say JMU has their work cut out for them. Uh, I presume they're going to win both these ball games, but you know, both App State uh, and Coastal Carolina would, you know, love to ruin JMU's, you know, coronation, if you will. Not to mention, uh, if they don't get the waiver, Coastal Carolina is five and two. They got a shot at being in the Sun Belt Championship themselves. App State, four and two. They got a shot at being in the Sun Belt Championship themselves. So huh, it is not all over, although Coastal did beat App. So somewhere along the way, I guess uh, at the time, if App beats James Madison, they're going to be certainly rooting for James Madison to be <laughs> Coastal Carolina if JMU does not get uh, the waiver. All right, let's take another timeout. When we come back, Troy does it again. And all of a sudden, are we going to start to hear John Summerall rumors? We'll see. Uh, would seem to be that time of a year. Okay. It is time to tell you about LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Troy with a expected a uh, drubbing of a uh, ULM. They did not get off to a slow start. Uh, they were leading 21 to nothing at half. And there may have been a uh, unlikely cover. They did get a couple of extra touchdowns late, but if one thing doesn't happen, they may not have, I think it was with only a couple minutes to go. 
Although I will say Troy was throwing the ball uh, at the end to get maybe the backup quarterback uh, some time. But uh, Troy punted. The spread was 21-ish. And they're up 31-14. But uh, Troy punted after a three and out with seven minutes left to go. ULM fumbles the punt. Troy scores a touchdown. ULM then punts three and out. And Troy scores another touchdown. So maybe, you know, the punt did lead to something. But uh, they do cover uh, for those of you and us who may care. Uh, anyways, another... You know what? How about this one? Uh, Troy now eight and two, five and one in the conference uh, with the South Alabama win over Arkansas State and the Cajuns uh, loss as well. Troy is and the Texas State loss. Uh, Troy is your Western uh, Division uh, champion. How about Gunnar Watson? How about his improvement, by the way? I th did I see that right? Has it been like five games since he's thrown an interception. I mean, how great is that? And he's only got four all year. He's got four interceptions. Hasn't thrown one since September. Arkansas state 37 to three army, 19, nothing Texas state 31, 13 South Alabama, 28 to 10 and beat ULM 45, 14. That's an issue. And this is something that John Summerall had mentioned you know, obviously we we love our defense, but it would be nice not to have to rely on them to win every single ball game. And, you know, they haven't in a while, right? WKU, sure. They got to stop at the end. Georgia State, they got to fumble at the goal line. Uh, Arkansas State wasn't close. I'm not sure Army was even that close. Texas State wasn't close. South Alabama game was a little bit closer than the 28 to 10 score would indicate, but I'm not sure South Alabama was threatening to win that ball game, but Gunnar Watson and the crew put that away late. And then, you know, ULM or uh, against ULM, it was all, it was all Troy. Um, good job by Gunnar Watson. That's, that's gotta be so self-satisfying, right? Uh, Kamani Vidal, only 15 carries, 50 yards, didn't score a touchdown, right? Uh, Jabri Barber had eight catches, 73 yards. Kamani Vidal actually four catches out, uh, out of the backfield for 46 yards. Barber did score a touchdown, but uh, Devontae Ross had a touchdown. Ethan Connor had a touchdown, and Asa Martin had a touchdown. So, um, really, uh, Gunnar Watson spreading, spreading it around. Also, I mean, this guy is already the you know, <laughs> winner of the, the, the name of the year in the Sun Belt. Goose Crowder is their backup quarterback, and that's outstanding how, how can he not be rooting for a guy named goose crowder <laughs> that's perfect please john bring him to sunbelt media days next season be, bring goose talk to me goose bring goose to uh sunbelt media days all right so we all woke up uh sunday morning to the not a little bit surprising but not necessarily shocking news that Texas A&M had fired Jimbo Fisher. Uh, the news leaked today because that's what it was supposed to leak. Uh, and that comes on the heels of a 52 to 10 win over Missouri. So the timing is odd, but the decision had been made basically Thursday, according to all reports. Uh, and that just means that, you know, the coaching carousel has started and even people I follow on Troy, you know, with the Troy on the Twitterverse, uh, they, uh, I mean, I would think John Summerall has got to be a top candidate somewhere, right? If he wants it, don't just start. He's got to be on a list. Wouldn't you think? I know he's not power five, but he's won the division. He's won, he's won the conference in his first year, could win the conference in his second year. I mean, Arkansas appears like that's going to be open. What if Lane Kiffin leaves Ole Miss? That's going to be open. I mean, can Lane Kiffin go to a and That would be the best. That would be. The only thing that would be more a and ming than uh, Lane Kiffin would be uh, Cliff Kingsbury. I saw someone hit, put him in there. That would be that. That would be outstanding. Uh, anyway, I, I would think that you know we'll see some some job openings come, and maybe there's a domino effect. I'm not sure if Summerall is going to Duke. 
if Mike Elko leaves. Um, but I, I'm sh- I, you got to believe there's going to be some job openings. I mean, Boise just opened up. I presume Brian Harson's going back there. I'm not sure. Uh, and we'll find some more. We'll see if my, you know, see if my Orange have a job opening. If Dino Baber has, has run his course, the Orange actually beat Pitt. But you would think that um, John Summerall would be at the top of most lists for coaching availability. It just that that's that's the way this works. He's been incredibly successful, incredibly fast. Uh, he's figured out the transfer portal. Go get him. All right. Now there, you know, I, I know that Troy's, you know, just a much smaller program than what we're talking about him going to. But I think if there's, and he's been at the power five, he was coaching Kentucky. So he knows what he's doing. Uh, I know Troy wants to hold on to him and I don't blame him. And we wish him all the best. If he does move on, he's been very kind to us. Uh, Let's see if he comes back for one more year. All right. It could be, this could be the type of situation where, again, he gets a little bit more money to stay at Troy. Uh, and he tells him, look, it has to be the right spot, whatever that means, right? We could go through the Napier thing. The South Carolina thing wasn't right. He was, uh, you know, talking to Mississippi State the year before. The Auburn thing, he didn't know who he was reporting to. And well, hopefully it works out with the Florida thing. I, I don't think they played all that poorly yesterday. They were right into it in the middle of the third quarter. And, Jaden Daniels, Jaden Daniels. So I, I would presume like a Kane Womack and uh, John Summerall that, that they're not going, they don't need to leave just to leave. All right. They don't need to jump ship because I don't think, I, I don't think they're looking like the next, their next move should be their last move really should be. All right. I don't think they need to go prove themselves somewhere that they don't want to be for the next 10 to 15 years. I don't know if they want to be in the NFL, but if they just want to stay in college, you would think that their next move would be where they want to be for a good part of the next decade. That's, I don't, I, I don't know how true that is, but that's what it would seem to me. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you so much for tuning into Locked On Sunbelt. We'll do the rest of uh, the Sunbelt uh, tomorrow. Again, Ken Womack with a big win uh, under a tough situation at Coastal Carolina in bad weather with a big win. So plenty more to do. Uh, throughout the week. Maybe we start talking a little basketball, just a little basketball as well. Again, I'm your host, Dave Schultz. Thank you so much for tuning in to Locked on Sunbelt, your team every day. Have a great week, everybody, and we will talk to you again on, on Tuesday.